Recently, China's Type 003 Fujian ship returned to its home port after its sixth sea trial. The black skid marks in the landing zone and the various types of carrier aircraft on the deck indicate that the Fujian ship has already carried out many catapult takeoffs and landings and is not far from being commissioned. The commissioning of Fujian is not the end of China's aircraft carrier program, but rather the beginning, because the cement carrier located in Wuhan has a new trend. Recently, some Western military experts, citing commercial satellite photos, said that the shape of China's aircraft carrier building has changed as far as the eye can see. Originally located in the carrier building, hull of the middle of the island structure was removed, while the new island base was installed closer to the aft position. The overall size has been enlarged to the level of the U.S. Ford class. These changes could mean that China's fourth aircraft carrier is now under construction because the carrier building is essentially a land-based aircraft carrier experimental facilities. The main purpose is to test the technical reliability of the carrier's various shipboard electronic equipment, fitness, and in the carrier aircraft and other equipment mixed electromagnetic compatibility. The entire facility was first exposed in 2009 when the shape of the carrier building can be said to be the same as the Liaoning ship. Not only is there a ship island, but also a skid deck. This suggests that the testing of equipment regarding the Liaoning began as early as when the Liaoning's main body was still undergoing localization renewal and renovation. In the following decade, the carrier building in 2015 and 2016 were exposed to a major remodeling. 2015 remodeling will originally refer to the Liaoning ship island structure modified into the same model of the Shandong ship marking the carrier building test target changed from the Liaoning ship to the Shandong ship. The 2016 remodeling, on the other hand, lasted about two years, with the slide over deck which had been in use for years, being removed and the island superstructure being torn down and replaced with a more modern one-piece mast. The appearance of these features also signaled that the object that the carrier building was going to test this time was China's first electromagnetic catapult carrier, the Fujian ship. As you can see, Whenever the carrier building undergoes a remodeling, it means that China is preparing its technology for a new domestically produced carrier. And in terms of timing, this preparation is synchronized with the carrier construction work. For example, an open source intelligence analysis said that the construction of the Shandong ship is likely to start in 2013 2014. And although the carrier building in the style of the Shandong ship was revealed in 2015, judging from the degree of completion, its remodeling work also began a year or two ago. Similarly, the Fujian ship's presumed start of construction was in 2016, as was the second remodeling of the carrier building. So now, after a gap of eight years, the carrier building is once again revealed to be undergoing remodeling work, and a massive remodeling with the removal of the old ship's island. The outside world will study and judge that China is building a fourth aircraft carrier. The result is completely deserved. Of course, China's construction of the fourth aircraft carrier this matter even without the aircraft carrier building corroboration, the outside world can also guess a rough. Anyway, last year when the two sessions, the Chinese Navy has been in the interview hinted at the news of the fourth aircraft carrier construction. The carrier building renovation will cause concern. The core reason is the location of the island and the deck layout from the satellite photograph. The fourth aircraft carrier probability of using a nuclear-powered design. It is important to know that the island structure of a conventionally powered carrier is not simply a workstation that combines the functions of commanding deck work, conducting air control, and maneuvering the ship's progress. It also requires the integration of flues so that exhaust gases from the powerhouse can be vented without affecting the efficiency of deck operations. Therefore, when designing the island location of a conventionally powered carrier, Apart from the deck layout, the powerhouse layout should also be considered. Cannot say that the powerhouse on one side, the island on the other side, and then let the flu to go, flying line, it. Amphibious assault ship is also the same, and this is the reason why most of these large conventional power ships use the center island. But nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are different, because there is no need to exhaust smoke. The location of the island can be completely based on the deck layout needs to decide. In order to maximize the efficiency of deck operations, especially so that the island side of the elevator does not need to transfer back and forth around the island scheduling, then the island structure is naturally the more aft the better, as far as possible to give the deck to the carrier aircraft. The US Navy's Ford-class aircraft carriers are a masterpiece of this design. As a matter of fact, the island of Nimitz class is already very far back compared to other carriers, while the Ford class further rearward the island of the ship, almost giving up the whole deck. According to the Americans themselves, this design with electromagnetic catapults can make the Ford-class carrier aircraft turnout rate 
compared to the Nimitz class increased by fully one-third. Aside from the existing problems, said it is the world's strongest aircraft carrier, there is no problem at all. So, judging from the deck layout of the new carrier revealed by the carrier building, it's almost a foregone conclusion that China's fourth carrier will be a nuclear-powered design. It's not impossible for China to catch up with the Ford class on the very next carrier. It is worth mentioning that, on the issue of how China develops aircraft carriers, there has always been a nuclear-powered and conventional-powered dispute. Each side has its own rationale, and no one will let anyone. But with the exposure of the domestically produced, sixth-generation aircraft, nuclear-powered carriers are likely to take advantage of this issue. This is because the size of the sixth-generation aircraft is larger than that of the fifth-generation aircraft, and this means that the sixth-generation aircraft will need more deck space if it wants to be on an aircraft carrier. The new era carriers are likely to set new records in terms of displacement and deck area, while in terms of superstructure arrangement, the island will need to compromise further on deck scheduling to facilitate the launch of deck operations for the Generation VI aircraft. What is clear is that an island that can be substantially repositioned is far more convenient than one that needs to be tied to a powerhouse. Unless the new conventionally powered carriers are able to break free from this shackle, the deck layout advantages of nuclear-powered carriers will make it easier for them to be favored by the plow in an era when sixth-generation aircraft are the trend.